Meseches Nidorim Daf Ayin Dalid begins with the Mishnah and discusses the halacha about what happens when a woman has a zika to yibum. Can her yavam be mefer her nidarim? Now, zika is a prelude to a marriage, just like a kedushin is. In the normal process, a woman is mekudeshes; she becomes an arusa. Her husband is her arus, and then comes nesuin. In the case of yibum, she's falling to yibum. There is a zika to yibum before the yibum is completed, and that's very similar to a kedushin. Now, the actual marriage is completed with yibum instead of nesuin. Now there is a difference that there's an in-between state and that's besides for zika there could be something between zika and yibum it could be mimer. Mimer would be doing a kedushin to a yivama which is a dirabana according to most opinions and it's not how it's really supposed to be done but it does create a stronger connection. Now when we learned Masachas Yivamas when there is a state of Zika, the Machok is Tanayim, whether Zika is a significant connection, and if it's a stronger connection similar to Kedushin or not. So our Mishra discusses when a woman is a Yavama, does she have the Halachos of Hafara, can her Yavam be made for her Nidar? Now, in Afghamina, we have to keep in mind is, is there one Yavam, or are there multiple Yavam? Is she falling even to one brother, or are there multiple brothers to her dead husband? So let's begin the Mishnah. And the Mishnah says, when a woman is a Shomer, Yavim, that is, she's waiting for Yibam, and she has that Zika connection. So there's three opinions as to whether the husband, the Yavim, can be made for her Nedarim or not. According to Rabbi Elazar, he can be made for her Nedarim, even if there are multiple Yavams, even if there are two brothers or more, they can be made for. According to Rabbi Yeshua, it can only be made for if there's only one. And the logic there is simple. There has to be a unique connection. And uh, Zika to one Yavam is a unique connection. If there are multiple, then there isn't. According to Rabbi Kiva, it doesn't matter how many there are, even if there's only one, you cannot be made for in the Dharam. The Zika does not work. The Gemara will explain what exactly the three opinions are, but the Mishnah brings some discussion as well. So the Mishnah says, first of all, Rabbi Lezer had a taina. He said that Kavachomer, if in a Kedushin, a normal Kedushin situation, where the connection between the husband and the wife is created only by the husband's decision, still the husband has the power to be made for Nadarm. So in the case of Yibam, where the Torah gives the Yavam a mitzvah to marry the woman, certainly it's a stronger connection and you should have the power to be made for Nadarm at that point. Point. Now, Rabbi Kiva responded, and Rabbi Kiva is the one who held that a uh, Yavim can never be Mayfair. And Rabbi Kiva said, no, because his connection is not complete. There can be shared connections. It's not unique. In case of Kedushin, he is the only man who has this connection to her. In the case of Yavim, there are multiple. So they said to him, that's true if there's more than one brother. There are two brothers that share. But if there's only one brother, so what are you telling me that there's multiple connections? There isn't. So Rabbi Kiva responded, he said, what I mean to say is that the connection is not complete. Kedushin, anybody who is Mizana with that woman, if she's Mukadesh to someone else, he gets Misa. It's a Iser Misa to do that. She's an Ish's Ish. Shomeris Yavim is only a love. So it's not nearly as exclusive to the Yavim as the situation of Kedushin is. That's the Mishnah. Now the Gemara begins. The Gemara wants to understand Pshad in each of these Tanaim. So the Gemara says the Yimachokas would seem to center around the concept of Zika. How strong is the Zika? Does that, is that a strong connection or a weak connection? So the Gemara says Rabbi Akiva, who holds that the Yavam can never do Hafara, obviously holds Ain Zika. He holds that Zika is not a strong connection. Rabbi Yeshua, who holds that the Yavam can only do Zika that the Yavam can only do Hafara if there's only one Yavam and not more. He holds Yesh Zika. He holds that it's a strong connection. Very simple. And he would hold that if there's more than one, so then the connection is weakened because you don't know who the Yavam is going to end up doing Yavam is. You can't say there's a connection that's very strong. What would be Pshat though in Rabbi Lazar? How could Rabbi Lazar say that even if there are multiple, even if he holds Yesh Zika, if there are multiple brothers, how could he know which is the brother that's going to end up doing Yavam? You don't know. You would have to say Yesh Breira to hold that there is Breira, and you could figure out afterwards who was the brother who would really ended up being the husband who's going to end up doing the Yibam. But we're not going to go with the Yesh Breira. We're not going to assume Yesh Breira here. We assume Ain Breira, and the Raisa will always say Ain Breira. So, therefore, 
what could be the logic? How could you say that there's a strong connection there if there are two brothers sharing that connection? And the Gemara answers that the situation we're talking about here is where he did mimer. There was one of the brothers who did mimer, and therefore there's a stronger connection that's made to him. And we don't worry about Brera, we don't worry about the other brothers at that point. Now, what are the three positions now? So, Rav Liezer holds, like the opinion of Beishamai, that mimer makes a full, complete Kenyan. So she's already mikudeshes because of the mimer. And if anybody else, if any of the other brothers want to try to do something here, a yimum, a biya, a mimer, any of those things, it's blocked by the mimer that has been performed, and it's not chal. And therefore, he's exclusive. Now, Rabbi Shua says, no, the mimer is not a full, complete Kenyan. It does not block. It does create a Kenyan, but it does not block. And therefore, it's only if there's only one Yavim, you could say that the connection is complete, that he should be Mayfair, as he says, because you could come and somebody could come and do a Bia, give a get. One of the other brothers could do a Bia, give a get, or a Mimer, any of these things, and that would create an Isser on the one who did the Mimer. And therefore, you can't tell me that there's a complete connection over here created by the Zika. Now, Rabbi Kiva holds, no, there's never any Zika, even if there's only one brother, the Zika is not strong enough to be considered a connection at all. So now the Gemara asks, there's an opinion of an Amira, Rabbi Elazar ben Pidas, not to be confused with the Rabbi Eliezer in our Mishnah, the Amira Elazar ben Pidas, he holds that the significance of Maimur, according to Beishamai, is only that the other tsaras, if there's another co-wife who's also falling to Yibam, at the same time, they cannot do a Yibam. If one of the wives did a mimer, that makes the other ones block that. However, it does not exclude the other brothers. The other brothers could still go ahead and do a mimer or a Yibam. So according to that opinion, how could you say that it's exclusive here, and that this is the explanation of Rabbi Elazar's opinion here, but how does that explain anything? The Mimer doesn't help anything because the Mimer doesn't block the connection to the other brothers. Sigmar so Ansis was talking about a more particular situation. It's not that Mimer was done, but it's more exclusive, and that's that they already were Omid Bedin. That is, they did Mimer, and they went to Bezdin to demand, she went to Bezdin to demand that the Yibam be completed, and Bezdin said that he has to pay her Mazonas because he, so he already did the Mimer, he has to go ahead and complete the Yibam. He hasn't done it yet, he has to start paying her. And if at that point he left, he still chayv to pay her. And where it says, like the opinion of Rabbi Pinchas Eimer Rava, who says that any woman who makes a net there has in mind that whoever is paying the bills is one who has the power to be made fear. She does not want to make a net that's going to impair or impede the support that she's receiving. Okay, now the Gemara has some questions on this. If you're saying that the case that we're discussing in the Mishnah is where Maimur was performed, the Gemara's first question is, how can the Mishnah say that Rabbi Eliezer's Taina was that it has to be that the connection here is very strong because it came in as Shemayim. It didn't come in as Shemayim, it only came because of the Maimur. And the Maimur is something that he did. The Yavim went ahead and did that Kedushin. If not for his Maimur, you would not have said that he has the right to have Faro. So how could you say that it was given to him in a Shemayim? Someone says, no, we didn't mean to say that it was Mamshkim to Minashmaya. We meant that if he did something to claim that which was given to him, Minashmaya. He was claiming for himself, Ayyadei Shemayim. Shemayim gave it, and he went and took it. But still, it's stronger than a regular Kedushin, where there was no connection between them other than what the guy went ahead and did himself. Next, the Gemara asks if it's true that the case here is where Mimer was performed. Then this should solve a question that Rabbi had asked. Rabbi asked, according to base Shammai, that Mimer is very significant and creates a strong connection. Is that connection like Irisin, like Kedushin? Or is it really like Nisuin? What's the Nafkamina, Beis Shammai? And Rabba was discussing what Beis Shammai would hold about whether she can inherit him, or he could inherit her, or whether she could be metame to, or whether he could be metame to her if he's a Kohen, whether she uh, were to get Chenek, whether if she was Mizanish, her her Boa would get Chenek. A number of halachas that apply that are different to a Nesua or a Arusa. We wanted to know how strong is the Zika exactly according to Bishamai. So we should derive from here that it is as strong as a real Nesuin because we're not saying that the husband has to do Hafara together with the father. If she'd be an Arusa, her father would have to share the Hafara. They would have to do it together. But you don't say that. So Marianne says, no, the mission didn't preclude that. The mission just said that the husband is the one who could do hafara, could very well mean together in partnership with the father and really has the status of an Arusa, not an Asua. 
All right, now the Gemara wants to bring a proof to Rev Ami that we're talking about where she did mimer, where he did mimer with her. That's the case where we're having this whole argument. That's the case of this Mishnah. So Gemara wants to say we have a Brisa that repeats this discussion, this three-way Machokas, and it seems to clearly indicate they're talking about we did mimer. And the Gemara is going to say that there are two proofs from this Brisa. First of all, what does the Brisa say? So the Brisa again repeats the three-way Machokas. It says a Shemeris Yavam. What is her halacha? According to Rav Lazar, whether it's one Yavam or two Yavamin, still you can do hafara. He still has the rights. Rav Lazar says, uh, Rabbi Yeshua says, it's only if there's only one brother. And Rabbi Kiva says, it doesn't matter how many brothers, one or two, you cannot do hafara. So here, Rabbi Eliezer comes with a taina, and he says, I don't understand if, the, if a wife who has no connection before you do Kedushin once she comes into his Rishos through Kedushin, he can do a Hafara, that is a regular woman who is not coming from Yibam. There is zero connection between her and her husband before Kedushin, and after he has the right to do Hafara. So the case of Yivama, who has a connection before she comes into his Rishos, certainly he should have a right to do a Hafara. That was Rabbi Yosef's Taina. So here you see right away two proofs. Um, two halves of a proof that show that we're talking about what she did, Mimer. Because we're saying that a Yavama had a connection to him before he came into her, b- before she came into his Rishos. So you see that there was a change in status. That means that she had a Zika first and then she became closer in his Rishos, but it's not talking about Yibum because then it wouldn't be relevant to her discussion about Shemeris Yavam. It's talking about when she came into his Rishos, that must be Mimer. That's what we're calling coming into his Rishos and that's what we're saying that she had a connection before that was Zika and now she has a stronger connection, which is um, Mimer. That's proof number one. But let's continue and see what the Brisa says. Rabbi Kiva responded. So Rabbi Kiva says it's very different. You're right. She had a connection to him before the Mimer. However, which well, what we're deriving is Mimer. However, just like she had a connection to him, there's someone else who also had a connection to him. His connection was not exclusive, and therefore cannot do that far. Very similar to what Abikiva answered in our Mishnah. So, of course, the response came from Bishua, and he said, well, that argument only makes sense if there are two brothers. But you're arguing and saying, even if there's only one brother, still he doesn't have a right to do Mimer. But there, there's no shared connection before he does the Mimer. So, Yamara, the Brisa continues, Abikiva said, you're right. However, we're only arguing in a case of Yibam, of Shomeraz Yavam, and a Shomeraz Yavam that has a Bia Teshuk, that does not incur Misa, that only is a Lav, and it doesn't matter if there's one other Yavam or two other Yavam, it makes no difference how many Yavam there are, it's still only Shomeraz Yavam, and still only Shomeraz Yavam Lashuk, and the Lach of Shomeraz Yavam Lashuk is that it's only a Lav, there's no Misa. And therefore, it is not considered to be a stronger connection as a connection of Kedushin, and it's not strong enough to carry Hefar. So there you see, again, the response. Because the way Rabbi Kiva phrases it, he says, whether she did Mimer or she didn't do Mimer, it's still in Yavam So you see, therefore, Rabbi Kiva is clearly saying, they're talking about whether it was Mimer. He's saying that before Mimer makes a difference, after Mimer there's no difference. And they're clearly arguing in the case of Mimer, and he's saying that either way, even with the Mimer, it's still only Yavam Lashuk and still only in Isir Lav. So there's our second proof that we have to be talking about Yavam Lashuk. And just to continue the Brisa, he said, Kishar Dvarim Kain and Nidarm. He said that other things are just like Nidar. So what does that mean? So says that's referring to the Isser Misa, which applies only to a real Kedushin relationship and does not apply to a Yibam slash Mimer Kedushin relationship. And there is again um, another indication that we're talking about Mimer. Now, the Brice finishes off and says that Benazai commented on this and he said, Chaval on you, Benazai, that you did not serve and learn from Rabbi Kiva as you could have in the fullest sense. You would have learned so much more from him as you see how well he can defend and answer his positions. Gemara ends off with another proof that we're talking about where Mimer was performed, and this time from our Mishnah. Our Mishnah said, Yevama Gemura Isha refer to a uh, Yavama as being as having a husband. So uh you are calling her a husband, that has to be that Mimer was done. Uh Yavama Ashumeris Yavam cannot be considered to be having a husband the Yavam. That can only be if Mimer was done you could use that phrase.